Judging by the title of this video, you should be able to tell what it's about by now. The Netflix Castlevania series is an outlier and honestly a shock to both fans of the game series as well as the general public. An adaption of a beloved game series produced by Western Studio for Netflix? There's no way we could have known how that would go, and it was a pleasant surprise to see that it was actually handled with love and care by showrunner Warren Ellis and producer and longtime fan Adi Shankar. Hmm, I wonder how those guys are doing these days. Oh, 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 um, hmm. Well, since it doesn't seem like we'll be getting more of the series anytime soon, I figure now is as good a time as any to make a video on it. Yeah, 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 I know that Addy has the Devil May Cry series coming up that allegedly will be connected to the Castlevania series in a Marvel multiverse sort of way, but at that time, I'll be way more focused on that project itself, as Devil May Cry is, I think, the only video game franchise where I've played every single single mainline entry and I feel like I can speak on it with a bit of authority. What the hell is this? Hey, by the way, like and subscribe or Dracula is gonna come get you. <sighs> okay, I admit it, this was originally supposed to be a Halloween video. The Castlevania series follows Trevor Belmont, the last of a long line of monster hunters, as he is accompanied by a powerful mage named Sypha Belnades and Alucard, son of Dracula, as they battle their way through hordes of demons to stop Dracula from enslaving humanity. Now, that's very much an oversimplification of the series as a whole, but this is the basis for everything that happens in the series later on. What's special about this Castlevania series is how the characters grow, change, split apart, and come back together over the course of the four seasons that the show was around. They added so much depth and characterization to these characters who simply didn't have it in the source materials and I appreciate that a lot, even though I haven't actually played the games myself. The show was very warmly received, some seasons better than others obviously, but overall Castlevania will be looked back on fondly, just because of how it's one of the only good video game adaptations to exist. That said, I've had a few more qualms with the series than others seem to have had. I'm definitely no stranger to hot takes or unpopular opinions, <laughs> Netflix Baki sucks, but the time has come for me to air them out and find out if I'm actually alone or not. Here's what I don't like about Netflix's Castlevania. The first thing that stands out to me about the series is the animation quality. I've heard people talk about how amazingly animated the fight scenes in the show are, and that's true. There are some really stunning visuals on display throughout the series, but I also can't help but notice that a lot of the non-fight scenes look a little janky. The scenes where the characters are talking to each other, or even just moving around a little bit, look so stiff and awkward. Heck, even in some fight scenes, you can see the movements don't look quite right. We gave this a pass because it's a western animation, because it's a Netflix show with a limited budget, and the story is pretty good. But be honest, if you saw this in a Japanese anime, would you give it a pass? And yeah, we've seen some real gems come out of Japanese studios too but we usually hold them to the standard that we know they can achieve. The saddening overwork and underpay in the Japanese anime industry that allows for the amazing anime visuals that we get today is a whole other can of worms. But this is what a fair and square, government regulated day of work looks like in the animation industry. And compared to Japanese anime, meh, not my favorite. But that's not to say that Powerhouse Animation, the main studio that saw this series all the way through, isn't capable. They've worked on a good deal of television shows, video games, and commercials. That also goes for the two Korean studios that pitched in at various parts of the series. Tiger Animation and MUA Film. I'm not an animation buff, so I can't say in detail what the source of the problem would be here. Heck, maybe it actually is a stylistic choice at certain points. But all I can say is that I didn't fully vibe with it. The next gripe I have with the series is something else that I've seen being praised by the general public, and that is the dialogue. The way the characters talk is uh, interesting to say the least. A mix of speech you'd expect to hear in a Victorian era period piece, as well as words you'd expect to hear in like a Judd Apatow movie. Watch your profanity. 
The writing in this show is expressly made to appeal to people who like watching stuff that's edgy, racy, gritty, and western. And for some scenes, it does add a bit of much needed energy. There are a lot of places where characters stop what they're doing and give long and well-rehearsed monologues about who they are and what they're all about. And using more modern language to punctuate it and get the point across adds to what could very easily be a boring part of the scene. But the issue for me is how many of the characters talk exactly like this regardless of their background or stature. Fuck or shit or ass wipe or something else that makes it all blend together a bit personality wise. Hell, in the final battle of the series, even Death or the Death Eater or whatever the hell Vardy ended up being talks like one of the boys down at the pub. It was so distracting. They say the mark of a good character design is being able to tell who it is just by seeing the silhouette. I would wager the same is true of character writing too. If you can take a line of dialogue completely out of context and know which character said it, I think that can be an indication of really well thought out dialogue. I'm going to eat your soul, shit it out, and use it to smother your fucking girlfriend to death. Shut up. Finally, I want to talk about another big aspect of what perplexes me about this show. It's something a little strange that probably seems like a nitpick, but I took issue with it, and that is the lack of voice actors. Uh, there are so many points where you can tell that the show didn't have the money for a scene and had to cut corners a little bit. Did you notice that aside from the main and supporting cast, not a lot of characters talk? For real, for a whole lot of side characters and extras, they don't have any lines in scenes where they should at least be talking a little bit. Like, check out the scene from season 2 where Dracula's warlords are meeting. These guys are leaders in their own nations, and here they don't utter a single word like they're scared busboys or something. What is this shit? Hey, where are you two going? We're going to talk to him. Why would he want to talk to you, Rob? They just like awkwardly stand there until it's time to do something, and it makes these scenes feel so cheap and strange. There were scenes where an entire vampire army is on screen, and we hardly hear a peep from them, during battle or otherwise. Honestly, it's because the show is so well produced in other areas that this particular issue stands out to me like it does. It just feels like after animating all the fight scenes, they didn't have enough money left over to hire actors for these bit parts. I'm not familiar with all the rules of the voice actors guild, but I believe that the number of cast members, number of roles for cast members, and amount of lines factor into contracts. But this just feels ridiculous. Look, I'm honestly not trying to call the production team amateurs, but it feels like watching a student film when stuff like that happens. I truly mean no disrespect, but I think Netflix did when they decided to kneecap the show like this. For the first season, it's somewhat understandable to give a limited budget to a project like this because there's no guarantee what the reception will be. But three seasons later and there's no visible change in these areas. They're just forced to save all their money for the fight scenes just like they always have. Can you seriously not have considered taking the arrow out of his brain? So all in all, I had a really good time with the show. There were several parts in the story that I had to roll my eyes at a little, but that doesn't take away from the fact that it's a great series and it shows what adaptations can be like if the people making them just care, like at all. And that goes for adaptations of video games, anime, comic books, or anything else. As I said, I'll be looking forward to that Devil May Cry series, and I have faith that it'll at least be better than the Japanese anime, which if you don't know, it was mostly just lackluster, so it was whatever. And we'll see if this Richter Belmont spinoff happens at some point and brings the Castlevania side of things back from the dead. Until then, I think I'll leave this off with a question. What is an anime but a miserable pile of fight scenes? Your words are as empty as your soul. <laughs> Hey, if you made it this far in the video, thank you very much. So, I gotta know, am I crazy or did anyone else feel like these parts or other parts of the Castlevania show were lacking? Whatever you think, comment it below and don't forget to like and subscribe if you like the channel and want to support. 
By the way, the channel also has a Discord server now. So if that's your thing, then feel free to go down into the description and click the link and join the server. Uh, talk about some stuff in there. And yeah, I also plan to do watch parties too. So I'll stream like an anime or a show or a movie or something. And yeah, we can all watch together and talk and chat and stuff. Yeah, looking forward to that. And with that said, peace out.